My presentation this afternoon is on the State of Working New York 2009, Unemployment and Economic Security in the Great Recession. Um, at the Fiscal Policy Institute, we, we do a full-blown, uh, as this year, State of, uh, State of Working New York, to try and uh, develop a uh, combined and, and integrated macroeconomic and labor market uh, narrative and analysis and perspective to uh, look at how uh, average people are faring uh, uh, in the face of both short and long-term economic trends. This afternoon, I'd like to uh, make the point that this is the Great Recession and explain that. Um, talk about some of the indicators of rising unemployment and economic insecurity. Uh, look at, uh, as Don did a little bit, New York in the national context. Uh, talk about the importance of uh, federal stimulus and what I see as some policies essential to uh, sustain economic recovery. This, is, this graph shows employment change from uh, the uh, business cycle peak for the United States. This is not New York. And uh, it's a complicated graph, but it's worth studying a little bit more carefully uh, at your leisure. We can't do it this afternoon. But, but basically, it, it, it either groups together uh, the recession since World War II and looks at the employment decline, how severe it is, and then how many months it takes to recover that. And you can see the, the uh, I'm not going to go through all the lines, but the, but the black line that sort of goes down looks like the classic V, where the first three recessions after World War II, they were very steep, uh, but they recovered uh, faster than more recent uh, recessions. The long line, the sort of shallow and yet very drawn out, uh, is the most recent recession, the 2000, 2001 recession, which actually was followed by a jobless recovery for, uh, for a couple of years and took many months to get back to the previous peak. Now, of course, the line that dips the furthest is the current uh, recession. So it's already had steeper job loss, and it's already in its 20, 20th month. So it's the longest recession uh, already. It passed that mark back in April. And it's the steepest, so hence I think that the name the Great Recession is appropriate. Um, the New York State Budget Office, uh, in their economic forecast, gives some other uh, measures of how the recession is very severe in New York. They project that for 2009, total wages paid in New York State will fall by 4.8%, and total personal income decline by 2.7%. Now. You know, those may not sound that bad, but if you look at the 50-year history of the BEA personal income series, these are by far the largest declines. And there was only one prior year, 2002, where there was any decline in total income at all. And that was only three-tenths of a percent. Uh, and the worst previous decline in wages was also in 2002 at 2.4%. So these are, uh, these are very, uh, very steep uh, declines. Uh, this translates into a level of consumption spending. We don't have any perfect measures of that, but if you look at sales tax collections, state sales tax collections for the 10 months through August, they were down by 8.6% compared to the 12 uh, months prior to that. Um, the unemployment rate has increased sharply over the past year by 3.5%. It's now 8.6% uh, in New York, not as high as 9.7%. Uh, national rate. New York City's rate is almost at the national level at 9.6%. Um, so it's been rising sharply, and as other, other speakers have indicated, it's likely to go higher and, and uh, likely at the national level to go about 10% for a few months. <clears throat> now, when you disaggregate the unemployment performance by uh, demographic group, you see some interesting and worrisome developments. Uh, there's been a sharp divergence between blacks and whites, uh, black unemployment uh, has really been skyrocketing uh, in recent months. Um, using the current population survey, in order to get at these demographic breakouts, we averaged six months of the current population survey. And this series shows, shows the six-month averages at three-month intervals. Um, so you can see for the first half of 2009, the black male unemployment rate was already 18%. If we had August figures, uh, that's probably 20% uh, by now. For Hispanic males, it's around 10%, whereas for white males, it's around 7 or 8%. So it's been going up across the board 
but much more quickly uh, for uh, blacks. This is female unemployment. It's also been rising very sharply, although it hasn't reached the levels of black male unemployment. Uh, black non-Hispanic female unemployment uh, for the first half was uh, around 11.5%. Hispanic uh, females, 10%. Again, much greater than for uh, white females. Um, the official unemployment rate, of course, more than in previous downturns, I think understates the real unemployment. We've seen a big increase in the number of discouraged workers, marginally attached workers, and workers who would like to work full-time but can only find part-time work. So the Labor Department has an alternative, as a series of alternative unemployment rates, the one called U6, which I refer to here as the real unemployment rate, factors in these other categories of workers, discouraged workers, the marginally attached, and the underemployed. And when you do that, you see that the black male unemployment rate in the first half of this year was 27%. Um, and for Hispanic women, uh, was 19%, 18% for, uh, for black women, and 17% for Hispanic uh, men. Now, of course, this sort of unemployment labor market picture is, has contributed to, uh, along with very, various other developments, to uh, a, uh, a crisis of economic insecurity. Um, very high mortgage foreclosures, even though foreclosures are not nearly as serious in New York State as in many other states. We have a for foreclosure problem. And if you look at the series there, you see that in 2008, 50,000 people had their homes foreclosed on in New York. And while there was a dip toward the end of last year, there's starting to be uh, a, a pickup there, as well as at the national level. And about 50,000 uh, individuals in New York uh, declared personal bankruptcy over the last four quarters. Housing values have fallen high household debt burden, eroded retirement savings from the decline in the stock market. The gains that there have been in the stock market, you know, only go part way toward making up the, the uh, losses. There's also been a decline in employer-provided pensions, a decline, continued decline in employer-provided health insurance and rising premium costs. Uh, what people who have employer-provided health insurance pay for health insurance premiums, their co-pay and their their part of the premium has increased by over 120% since, uh, since the year 2000. Um, just one note on the, on the longer term uh, employment outlook, uh, uh, the Labor Department makes occupational projections and even before the downturn, I would characterize that as rather bleak in the following respect, that a third of the projected net job growth in New York State over the next 10 years will come in low-wage jobs that pay less than $14 an hour in 2008 dollars. Now, so low-wage jobs will account for a third of the job growth. They account for a sixth of the jobs in the economy now. So disproportionately, job growth is projected to, to occur in low-wage jobs. Uh, you know, a lot of these developments come to a head and bear down sharply on the African-American population. Barbara Ehrenreich uh, recently wrote, uh, she had a, a, a long op-ed in the New York Times yesterday, although this quote doesn't come from that, where she said that the most salient and lasting effect of the current recession may turn out to be the decimation of the black middle class. So this is a picture that I've been talking about in terms of New York State. Of course, it applies the same at the national level. I don't think this creates a solid foundation for a sustainable recovery. High debt burdens, job market outlook, um, falling uh, savings, uh, and, and so on. Um, this is not a very promising picture. I think we need policy changes to address that. There we go. Um, now, let's look for a minute at New York in the national context. It's not really a consolation that other states are a lot worse off. Um, the years, the months that I have here are not quite right. It should be uh, for the first bullet from December of 07 to May of 09. New York State job loss was 2.2% compared to 4.6% nationally. So that ranked New York 41st. Or 40 states had greater private sector job loss 
uh, than New York. The state's unemployment rate ranked at 23rd highest among the states. And in terms of 2008 foreclosure rates, New York ranked 34th. So uh, clearly, we have a very serious recession here, but it's worse in other places. Um, you can see the, the, uh, how this plays out in terms of metro areas. This is job change uh, over the past 12 months for the 14 metro areas in uh, New York and how they rank. So uh, a, a low rank here is a good thing in terms of less, uh, less job decline. Um, what is it, 12 of the 14 uh, metro areas in New York rank in the top half, that is in the better half uh, among metro areas uh, in the country. Why is recession worse elsewhere? Um, well, in part, the bubble, if foreclosures had a lot to do with the decline, the bubble bypass upstate, the housing bubble bypass upstate, we, we tried to look at using regression analysis, what accounts for the variation in employment change across state, and the foreclosure, the foreclosure rate on a state basis in 2007 was by far the most significant variable explanatory factor, with the dependent variable being job, private sector job loss uh, from <coughs> December uh, 2007 to July of um, 2009. We also looked at the increase in state expenditures and found that it was negatively related to job loss. That is, states that had more, had a greater increase in state expenditures for the two years through fiscal 09 had less job loss than, than in other states. Um, sort of a different reason why the recession is worse elsewhere is that the finance sector, which you know, a lot of people say had a lot to do with the Great Recession, is not declining nearly as much as what was once thought. Um, let me say two things about that. If you look July over July, uh, private sector employment has declined 5% in, New, in uh, the U.S. Uh, finance employment has declined 3.8%. Banking employment has declined 2.9%, about half of what the overall private sector declined. And in New York, um, you know, a lot of people were projecting, myself included, doom and gloom a year ago this time uh, after the financial market meltdown. Um, the Labor Department in a recent publication projected that New York would lose far more finance sector jobs um, than what is turning out to be the case. And if you look at the banking sector over the past year, there has been no job decline in New York City banking industry over the past 12 months going back to the month before um, the financial meltdown. Um, should I take two more minutes and finish up? Okay. Um, two things about the uh, American Recovery Reinvestment Act and its importance in New York. The fiscal relief component has played out very well for New York. New York got 10% of the $140 billion total. This fiscal relief component is the largest single spending component in the uh, stimulus package, and so New York is getting 10% of that. New York was able to close about a third of its budget gap this year with that. Uh, the second largest component is payments to uh, increased unemployment insurance or various payments to individuals, increased food stamps, and so on. And this has also played out fairly well for New York. New Yorkers are getting something like $5 billion out of this. The Center on Budget Policy Priorities indicates that the recovery payments to, to New Yorkers will, the recovery payments, the spending side, and the tax credits will protect over 400,000 New Yorkers from uh, falling into poverty uh, in 2009. Um, I want to talk a little bit about wages to just, just to emphasize that wages haven't grown uh, much over time. And uh, th this is in the packet uh, on the right-hand side, the last panel there. There's a typo in the second row from the bottom. It should be high school females. The point here basically is that most New York workers haven't seen real wage increases since 1990. Men have seen declines, women increases. But when you look at women, the increase has been concentrated among white Hispanic males. And then if you look at uh, white Hispanic females, and if you look at females more closely, only better educated uh, females have, have seen increases. Um, this is in contrast to the fact that uh, productivity has been growing 
reasonably well in New York, and economists would say that we need to have productivity growth in order to get wage growth. Well, when you have a gap in the growth in productivity and the gap in wages, then you have an economic problem uh, that makes, it makes it hard for you to have a sustainable economic recovery. I would relate this to the uh, increased polarization of income in New York. This chart, taken from IRS data, sort of follows what Piketty and Saez do at a national level and uh, looks at the concentration of income growth over the last five years from 02 to 07, showing that the top 4%, basically people with incomes over 200,000, got 78% 78, 78 of the income growth. Uh, the last set of bars shows that <coughs> their incomes grew by 66% compared to 10% growth for everybody else. Inflation over this time was 15%. Real income declines for the bottom 96% over this time. Um, maybe in the Q&A, I'll talk about some of the policy. Thank you.